fixed my bandsaw. You might remember that it, uh, the blade shattered on me. Um, and so I've been putting it to use. And uh, I actually got a different resaw blade that was, oh, I don't know, less than, um, well, well less than a quarter of the cost of the other blade and seems to be doing a pretty good job. Um, it's a little rougher cut, um, but uh, I had to plane it anyhow, so um, I don't think it's really gonna make that big of a difference. Anyhow, this one's been a champ. I've gone through a whole bunch of lumber with it. Um, very hard, uh, hard maple um, and a whole lot of cedar. Um, so uh, you recall the, the rescued um, Western Red Cedar, um, and of course that wasn't going to work to, to strip the entire boat, but, um, uh, I was able to salvage some of it, um, and I've got a lot of short strips, um, that I'll use to, uh, you know, strip the bottom of the boat, and, um, and then I decided I was going to make a feature strip, so, uh, a feature strip is a little wider strip, um, and it's got some, you know, a little bit of design to it. So uh, I've been tinkering around, and I've come up with a couple of designs, um, if you can imagine that being about 17 or 18 feet long. Um, that one's just a straight diamond. And then this diamond with the little dots, um, and I think that's going to be my ultimate um, choice. Um, and I just put these together by stacking them, and so there's some, you know, quality issues with them. So I've got a little better plan of attack to, um, to make the actual feature strip. So what this is is walnut, um, hard maple, um, cedar, um, and then that little yellow dot in the middle is Osage orange. Um, and again, these are just rough, you know, I was tinkering around trying to figure out how to make them. And I think I got a little better plan. So, um, so what do I do with the rest of my Western Red Cedar? Well, here, here's a lot of it, right? Um, I got as many clear sections as I could, um, and uh, uh, you know, just milled them up to be able to make these these strips. So, um, you know, basically, it's going to be a lamination like that. Um, of course, that's going to be upside down. Um, and then the next piece here, like that, then like that. Um, so essentially what I'm going to do is just take these to my miter saw, um, you know, cut these at 45 on both ends. Um, and then I'll be able to drop that, uh, that square piece, um, you know, in between, and then I'll laminate them to um, this this uh, walnut stock, um, which uh, which will be about 18 feet or 17 feet long, um, you know, when I've uh, scarfed them all together. Um, so uh, you know, I got a couple of days' work probably there to get that done, and um, and uh, I'm gonna probably have it done I hope by this weekend so that I can start building my molds and get ready to strip out the, the canoe okay. so I have probably made as many mistakes as uh, one can possibly make um, <laughs> so uh, it, you know this walnut strip you see here along the bench um, uh, had to be scarfed together from I think from four different pieces um, and uh, so when I did the scarf, um, I cut them at an eight to one ratio, which is, I think, pretty standard. Um, and here, here's one of the scarfs. Um, and I used the polyurethane glue, which I probably won't uh, use again. But you can see it's, you know, that long of a scarf. Um, uh, be eight inches long to one inch thick. Um, so of course it's obviously much shorter than that here. Um, you know, but, uh, I probably won't use that polyurethane glue again for these kinds of things because what I'm finding is as I'm, you know, leveling out the hump, um, you know, with my planer, um, 
you know, it's taking the wood down nice and smooth and it's sort of feathering out this edge, but that polyurethane glue is sort of all bubbly. And when you plane it down, it, it leaves sort of a gap here, right? So I'm gonna have a gap when I sandwich my other components in. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to fill those, uh, you know, later with epoxy once it's done, probably a, a thickened epoxy with you know some wood fiber in it or something like that but uh anyhow so the the idea is um and this other side is already plain smooth except for the the little hump area um which i'll get plain smooth here shortly um but the idea basically is to take a lamination like this um uh, which is the cedar and the hard maple um place it on the uh, glue it down to the walnut um, cut the ends on a 45 um, and then when you butt them together um, what you end up with uh, is half of the um, half of the pattern Okay, so now that we're done hand planing and um, using the power planer, here's what we have. Uh, we have a lamination of a piece of hard maple on top of a piece of cedar. Um, and you can see that it's uh, smooth on three sides. So basically the, the hard maple is very nice and smooth. The edge that we hand planed is square and smooth, um, and the piece of cedar is smooth. And the reason we want that all smooth is um, so that we can reference this edge up against the miter saw, so we have a nice square cut. Um, and then we'll glue this down to the maple, and we'll then once that is all laminated, we'll slice this, uh, we'll rip it right down the middle, um, and then just fold that piece over the top and glue them down. Um, in between there, we'll also be putting in a, a little square, or actually on edge, so it'll be a diamond um, of walnut um, every uh, 12 inches. And uh, so, over the length of about a 17 foot strip it'll you know have uh i think 16 diamonds um in it um along the way so um so we're getting there we're about halfway now okay so now that we cut the 45s on the miter saw which is right there um you can see that uh we've got this set up now to put the put the diamonds in here and so I will cut a full diamond and then um, we'll lay that in uh, it's about an inch and a sixteenth so I'll probably cut it an inch and an eighth and then run it through the planer so it's nice and smooth on both sides um, or all four sides actually and uh, and then um, when uh, when I've got them all glued in nice and firmly uh, I'll run it through the table saw and we'll just rip the very top layer of, of the cedar off along with the um, top of the diamond and um, you know that'll make a nice smooth surface and then we'll rip it um, along its length um, and uh, and then just fold the halves over one another and we should have we should have our pattern and so here we have all the components now of of the lamination that'll go into the feature strip. Um, this long continuous piece of walnut, the piece of hard maple, piece of cedar, and then this square out of this stock that I made um, of walnut. And then we'll run this through the table saw and just cut that top of the diamond off. Um, then we'll rip it, as I've said many times, 
rip it lengthwise and then we'll just fold the other end over so that the cedar pieces are meeting in the middle sandwiching it, uh, all of that together uh, in between the walnut uh, strips and that should do it well as the saying goes you can never have too many clamps and uh, <clears throat> I do have a few extras that I haven't applied here mostly because they don't have a deep enough throat um, you know or, or aren't or can't span wide enough but um, I think I got 41 clamps up and down this um, this is the feature strip and as you recall I said I would you know slice it down the middle and then laminate the, the top and the bottom together uh, to form that diamond and you can see it right there um, you know so as these uh, dry up um, I'll take these clamps off um, there's a few spaces here that you know I, I really actually do wish I had maybe a half a dozen more more clamps but uh, but I think I think that'll do for now we are at the last stage of uh, making the feature strip and then you can see um, you know it's all glued together and uh, turned out pretty good looks like there's a few you know minor little separations where the glue um, might have been compressed more but uh, but basically I just uh, took the my my Makita power planer here um, ran down it a couple of times and it gave me a pretty good uh, pretty good finish and um, you know the last thing for for me to do now is to um, stand it on edge and run it through the table saw and split it in two. Actually, I'll split it in three because one will be waste. Uh, it'll be this rough edge here. Uh, will be waste and then, uh, you know, I'll have two, you know, nice strips uh, out of this. And then the, the final thing to do with these is that I will put a, uh, a bead edge on the top and the bottom uh, to mar marry up with the bead and cove system on the uh, hull of the boat. Uh, I am not going to put the the dots in. Um, I feel like I've tempted fate and fate enough on this, so um, <laughs> so I'm just going to slice it and um, I'm going to put it up until I'm ready to do the uh, the router, the bead and the bead and cove work. Uh, 18 feet long. quarter inch thick okay and here's one of them that's planed down um, and uh, you know that's pretty well finished except for the um, putting the uh, bead on it at the router table and you know one thing you can really tell here why the outfeed tables are so important and will be much more important on the router table is you know this is now a quarter of an inch thick and you can see you know how flexible flimsy that is and what you don't want to do is of course uh you know run it through the router table and snap it right so um i think it'll flex fine going on to the boat i mean there's you know three or four feet of um you know curvature there right you know just by trying to pick it up by its own weight so um, so I think we're cooking with gas as long as, uh, you know, we can get it through the, the router table.